Welcome to the first ever episode of Teach em Tuesday on Teach em Tuesdays, which yeah, I know it's a terrible name, but it's all I could come up with. On the episodes of Teach em Tuesday, I'm gonna either sit down or maybe be out in the field or I don't know, I'm gonna teach something, hopefully quick. I'm gonna try to do them under five minutes, but you know me, I talk too much. And before I get into the first ever episode of Teach Em Tuesday, let me talk really quickly. First, bear with me on the changes in the channel. There's the Teach Em Tuesday videos, which might not be for everybody, but I do think that the longer videos that are gonna come on Thursdays and Sundays are gonna be awesome and everybody will love them, or at least a lot of people will like them. Bear with me, there's obviously gonna be growing pains but it should be a lot of fun and I think it's gonna be worth it in the end secondly there's a new tour announcement there's a link in the description of this video over to my website to check out that announcement about the next workshop which is gonna be amazing now let's get to teach them Tuesday this is a camera this is a pretty normal camera the Canon EOS R but the camera settings I'm gonna talk about on this episode can be found on basically any camera. When I'm running workshops, there's always a couple moments within the trip where I'm helping out a participant and I'll just say to them, can I change this one thing on the camera for you? And generally they'll go, oh wow, that's actually really helpful. And I think there are six or seven things in camera that you can change to make your life as a photographer a whole lot easier. The first is raw. Like why are you shooting JPEG? And I know a lot of people think that shooting JPEG is better because it means they won't have to edit their photos. But what you're actually doing is allowing, you know, your picture profile to edit your photos for you. What it does is restricts you in the future. You might not want to edit your images now, but three years from now, you might want to print something that you shot three years ago and go, ah, the file size just isn't big enough. I need a TIFF file or I wish I would have shot the white balance a little bit better and you can't change as much in JPEG as you can in RAW. So shoot RAW. One really big one is to remove the long exposure noise reduction. I'll be out in the field at nighttime shooting with people and they'll shoot a 30 second photo and I'll be like, oh, are you shooting another one? And they're like, no, I'm just waiting for my camera. Because if you have long exposure noise reduction on, however long it takes you to make the photo, so it's a 30 second exposure, it's gonna take just as long to process it, so another 30 seconds. And that noise reduction is only going to impact the JPEG that you show on the back of your screen. It doesn't affect the RAW file. The only thing it's gonna do is it's gonna mean that you're able to shoot half as many images as you could shoot otherwise. So if you're shooting RAW, turn it off. Auto rotate, if you're like me, you shoot vertical a lot, you shoot portrait mode, but you shoot the portrait shot, and then the image shows up across the screen like this, and you can't really see all of it, it's just a tiny picture. Auto rotate flips that image around when your camera's held like this, so you can see the entire image. The beep, for sake, turn the beep off. It's okay if you're out shooting by yourself to have the beep because you might need it to find out when your camera's focused or whatever. But if there's other people around or if there's animals around, turn off the beep for the love of <laughs> Grid display. I think grid display is totally underrated. And I know a lot of people don't put on grid display because they want a clean image. They want to be able to see everything on their LCD. But having a grid display allows you to figure out the rules of composition a whole lot better. Whether you're trying to get symmetry or whether you're trying to follow the rule of thirds, having the grid there is a really nice guideline. And most people don't realize that the grids can actually be, be manipulated to two by two or three by three. They can even be manipulated so you have diagonals and can really lock in on the rule of thirds or some of the other rules of composition. Exposure simulation isn't a thing most Canon users deal with because by default it's on on camera, Canon cameras. What that is, is if you're on live view, your LCD will show you a simulation of what the exposure is gonna look like. So you'll know if it's underexposed or overexposed. On older Nikon cameras, some older Canon cameras, and I'm not really sure how the other models work, it'll tell you what the exposure is like, but it won't exactly give you a proper exposure simulation unless you have that setting on and unless your camera has that setting. So if your camera has that setting, turn it on. Mirror lockup is another one. I get a lot of people telling me my images just aren't sharp. I set, set them on a tripod, I use a timer, I just don't get sharp enough images. And a lot of times it's just mirror lockup. Your camera has a mirror. When you take a picture, the mirror snaps up and it can create vibrations that can make your image less sharp. So if you're on a tripod, set your mirror to lockup, 
a two second timer. You'll press the shutter, the mirror will go up, it'll wait two seconds, it'll take the picture and you'll have no shake. And finally, back button focusing. Traditionally, by default, cameras are set up so that you focus by pushing the shutter halfway down, it focuses, and then you push the shutter the rest of the way down and it takes the picture. In back button focusing, you turn off the focusing capabilities of the front button, the shutter button, and you move them entirely to the back button. That allows you basically to focus faster, to shoot faster, and a bunch of other different benefits that you'll get to know as you shoot more back button. And speaking of back button focusing, in a couple weeks time, I'm gonna do a whole video on back button focusing, how it works and why it's beneficial. And of course, how to set it up. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. And as I mentioned, big fun video coming from Manila on street photography on Thursday. I'll see you there. Peace.